All right, fam, so we are back at it again with another crazy video. Now, in today's video, we have something, I I'll say that I did talk about this topic maybe about twice, three times, or maybe even four times, I don't know. Okay, but I have talked about the LGBT community and Jesus Christ, and a lot of people that's in the LGBT, I won't say a lot of people, but I'll say a decent amount of people believe that they can be the way that they are and also love Jesus. So without further ado, I got this video that I found on TikTok. We're going to watch the entire video, okay? And then I'm going to get all my thoughts at the end of the video. And without further ado, man, hit the like button, subscribe to no post notifications, follow your boy on all social media platforms down below. Definitely follow me on Instagram and TikTok. Y'all don't want to miss the content over there. Without further ado... Let's get it. Let's go. It's been a minute since I did this. I have my Bible. Yeah. So I was reading out of Romans. Um, by the way, if you ever feel like you're falling from grace or you feel like you don't feel um, the Holy Spirit or um, Jesus' presence or God's presence anymore or you don't think you hear him anymore, read Romans. It's actually any of the parables. Are, they're supposed to give you help, hope. But Romans specifically is what I'm in right now, and it's doing something, yeah. So the verse I underlined was Romans 4, 26 through 28. Um, I'm just going to read it to you right quick. God did this to demonstrate his righteousness, for he himself is fair and just. He declares sinners to be right in his sight when they believe in Jesus. And no, because our acquittal is not based on obeying the law, it's based on faith. I underline those because um, you, you don't know me. I am a stranger to you, but um, I'm gay and I'm also a Christian. And those two, for me, for a very long time, have contradicted. You, I didn't know it's possible to be both. Um, yeah especially before I, I even started reading through the bible it was just a lot of prejudice against homosexual homosexuality um backed by reasoning from the bible even now as i read through it i see um certain verses that are kind of condemning homosexuality like in Leviticus, actually, let me flip to it. I think I underlined it. Yeah, I did. I put a question mark <laughs> next to it. Yeah. So it says Leviticus eighteen twenty two: Do not practice homosexuality. Having sex with another man, as with a woman, is a detestable sin. And I think it says something like this. Um, along these lines, these lines somewhere else in the Bible, I forgot, but um, I think it, it says it only one other time or two other times, I don't know, but it's not mentioned very much. But even then, it was enough to deter me the scripture and the, the, the people. Um, that's why I've kind of developed a fear of going to church, yeah, because of the way I present, yeah, that's why. But going back to Romans. Um, the reason I underline um, Romans 4, 26 to 28 was because it's not obeying the law. That doesn't mean you can do whatever you want. That just, that's not what I mean. That's not what it means. It, it's your relationship with Jesus that saves you. So it doesn't matter how you identify, who you love, how you are. And just as long as you, as he knows you and you know him... You're saved. So, I mean, like, I don't know who needed to hear that. But it would have been nice for me to hear one more for the road. Actually, what I just read out of Romans was not Romans 4. It was Romans 3. It was Romans 3, 26 through 28. This one's Romans 4, uh, 7 through 8. And it says, Oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven, whose sins are put out of sight. Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared. And I think it says the same thing. And I wrote it, Psalms 32, 1-2.
went there too. But yeah. Very discombobulated. Hopefully I got my point across. Ka-chow. It's been a minute since I did that. First off, <laughs> first off, I want to say this. Uh, I don't even know her name, but dog, you're mad cool. Okay, you're mad cool. I can just tell like you just like chill vibes. You know what I'm saying? Like I'd really be cool with you. You know what I'm saying? Like she just seemed like she just mad chill, laid back. You know what I'm saying? She seemed like she just oh no, like her vibe is there. You feel me? But um, let me talk about this video. So number one, if people don't know my testimony, I was once in this. LGBT community at the time I didn't even know I was really an LGBT I didn't know what I was I didn't know if I was bi gay I didn't know I knew that I had some type of attraction for the up for the same gender then I also knew that I dated merely women but I still had some type of like secret attraction for men at the same time so that's my little te that's like a little fast break testimony there but the reason why I, I, I say this you can be lgbt and call yourself a christian okay because there's plenty of people who are thieves and they call themselves a christian it's plenty of people who are sexual molester or sex molesters or whatever you want to call them who call themselves christians okay so you can have the title of a christian but we also have to understand that jesus said if you love him you will obey his commands we also have to understand that when we read the bible the bible is a consistent theme we can't pick and choose what scriptures we want to follow so therefore, if the scriptures say this and another scripture say this and another scripture in the New Testament say this, that's tied to the uh, that's ties to the same scripture that states in the Old Testament. You get what I'm saying? It's like we can't pick and choose. I can't pick one scripture from Romans and then I see that Leviticus say this, but also somewhere in the New Testament, first Corinthians, it says the same thing that Leviticus 18, 22 say. I can't just pick and choose which ones I want to follow. You know what I'm saying? The Bible is a consistent thing and if you call yourself a believer in Christ, we are ought to follow the word of God. We are ought to want to live our life as Jesus lived his life. You know what I'm saying? And I want to say, I want to also say this, that there is nothing, there is nothing wrong for liking the same gender. You can like the same gender, but you don't have to have a true feeling of desire or what uh, sexual attractions to that same gender, if that makes sense. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I can say that, man, I love my brother. Or, you know, my brother as a as a homie, I love my brother, woo, 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 you feel me? But that doesn't mean that I need to have the a sexual attraction towards that man. You feel me? I can love or like the same gender, but that doesn't mean that it has to go, be up, it has to go beyond that love. You know what I'm saying? Because we're still all to love one another. You feel me? And then another thing that she said was she was talking about uh, she fears to go to church because of how she portrays. If you feel as if you're doing the right thing, then you shouldn't have to fear of going, you shouldn't have to fear of going to church. You know what I'm saying? Although you may be in this field, but that's why we need to find churches that I wouldn't say that accept us for who we are. You know what I'm saying? They should accept us for who we are. You feel me? But who you are trying to be, that is not who you are. You know what I'm saying? Because guess what? God created you a, a God created you a certain way. God didn't create no one gay. Okay. Because if, if, if God created anyone gay, that would be a contradiction. God will be contradicting to his word. What I mean is that God say that we are here to reproduce, to make babies, to expand the earth. That, that's what we're here to, to reproduce, to continue to have sex and continue to make babies and do these things. Of course, in the covenant of marriage. But however, if you are with a woman and a woman, you cannot bring life into this earth so what do your what do your sexual attraction bring it brings death because therefore you could not bring life and make babies and do what god has called us to do you know what i'm saying in the beginning god created man and woman he didn't create man and man he didn't create woman and woman it was a man and a woman it was a woman poured from a man's rib when god say when the Bible tells us that this is when a man leaves his father and mother to be joined to one with his wife, not a father, not he, not a man leaves his father and mother to be joined to one with his husband. No, joined to one with his wife. Okay, the Bible never tells us nothing about a man and a man or a woman and a woman. This is one of the reasons why Solomon Gomorrah uh, got destroyed because of this sexual mortality that was happening in these cities. More than sexual mortality, this wasn't just sexual mortality. This was literally homosexual things that was happening okay and 
people think that the Bible is just a a book that just ah oh, it 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 condemns homosexuality. It condemns this. The thing that we have to understand is that we cannot want God and also want our flesh. If you want to love God with all your heart and you want to truly come to him, then you need to fully submit and commit yourself, commit your entire life to his will. You cannot want the world and also say that you want God. It doesn't work out. The Bible tells us that we cannot serve two masters. So I cannot serve the flesh and also serve God at the same time. I got to pick and choose. There is no middle ground between what you want to be. You know what I'm saying? The Bible tells us what Jesus said in Revelations was he will spit you out from his mouth for he do not for you're neither hot nor cold. You're lukewarm. You're neither hot nor cold. So therefore, if Jesus said that he will spit you out from his mouth, what do you think that means? That's in the New Testament and that's from Jesus mouth. So therefore, we need to understand that we cannot continue to live in the flesh and also want to live in the spirit. The Bible tells us that the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Okay, so we have to understand these things and we have to truly submit ourselves to the Lord. If you want different desires and say, man, why do I have these desires? Why do I have a desire of loving another man or loving another woman? And I'm the same gender as them. Why do I have these desires? Why did God give me these desires? If you want your desires to change, all you have to do is say, Lord, help me to have the desires of your heart. Change my desires, Father God. Change my See, A lot of us don't come to God with these issues because we're not really willing to give these issues up. I came to God and asked the Lord to help me with my pride. I came to God and asked him to help me with my pornography addiction. I came to God and asked him with my homosexuality. I came to him and asked for these things. A man who asks shall receive. You have not because you ask not. I like this is the things that the Bible talks about. You know what I'm saying? The reason why I was free from these things is because I didn't sit there and say, man, I still want to watch porn, but still want to love God. Don't get me wrong. I have my slip ups. I have my mess ups, but I truly committed myself to the Lord and I prayed and asked the Lord to switch my desires, change my desires, help me to stray away from these things. And then another thing that I did was I put myself around a community of men who also struggled past tense, who struggled with these things. And now that I'm around them and now they're free, I could be around them and they can help me to overcome what I'm uh, overcome, what I'm dealing with. The same thing that they was dealing with, I'm dealing with. So now I'm around them so they can help me overcome these things. That's why we need community. That's why we need to stay in church. That's why we need to do the things <laughs> like, I don't know, bro. Like this is, this is a, a topic that a lot of people talk about being LGBT and loving Jesus and doing this. And that's good. And you know, what was really good about her is the fact that she's reading her word. So she knows the word of God, but in the spiritual realm, they don't want her to fully commit to the Lord. So the devil was still allowing her to think in her mind that this is the way that she was born. The devil was still allowing her to think in her mind that this is the way God created her to be. And in reality, it's not. In the spiritual realm, you got the angels pulling her to this kingdom side, but then the demons pulling her to the to hell because they don't want her to go. They don't want her to go. When she get that lust spirit out of her, when she get that homosexual demon out of her, I promise you she will be free in the name of Jesus. She will be healed in the name of Jesus. You got to trust in the Lord with all your heart. You got to commit yourself to him. Stop wanting to live for the world and live for the spirit. You cannot do both. You cannot live for the spirit alone. That's all you need to do is live for the spirit. Ask the Lord to change your desires of your heart. Okay. Ask the Lord to change your desires. If you know Leviticus 18.22, and if you also know Deuteronomy, and if you also know 1 Corinthians, or I think it's 2 Corinthians, it's one of the Corinthians, if you know what the word says about homosexuality, then that should tell you something. That should truly tell you something. I'm telling you, man, it's a spiritual battle right here. Right now, she's facing spiritual warfare. It, one, one, one way is pulling her somewhere. The other way is pulling her this way. It's, man, I'm telling you, bro, we got to get right. We got to get right with God today. We got to fully commit ourselves to him. We know right from wrong. You know what I'm saying? But I understand that sometimes the desires of the flesh, it seem more fun or more better than the desires of the spirit. The desires of the spirit want to do things that we don't really want to do. But the desires of the flesh do things that we truly want to do. The desires of the spirit do things that we need, though, because that's our spirit is connected to the Lord. But our flesh is connected to the our flesh. This is all dead. This is when you die. This this is not coming with you to heaven. No, no, no. This is just a house that our spirit is living in. Man, let me stop, man, because I'll give y'all a whole sermon out here, man. But yeah, man, y'all let me know what y'all think about this in the comment section below. Uh, Like I said, honestly, bro, I love you. You know what I'm saying? God loves you more. And 
truth be told, you will come out of that sexual, that sexual perversion that you're in. You know, you, you will come out of that because if you're reading your Bible and you're continuing to stay focused on the word of God, eventually the word of God is going to be placed so hard in your brain that it's going to like, you're, you're fighting, you're literally fighting the demons away with the sword. So continue to press in the word of God. It don't matter if you're gay, straight, smoking weed, continue to press in the word of God and watch things start to just, you, you go see things just start to leave. Just go, just go, just go. But you got to want it for yourself also. You got, if you see that the word of God say that we should be sober minded, if you see that the word of God tells us that pornography is not good or that lust is a sin or that you will not inherit the kingdom of God if you do this or do that, do this, and you know that you do these in your life and you're not willing to give it up, that's on you, man. You got to be willing to get these things up. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Anyways, man, I love y'all, bro. God bless. Stay blessed. Enjoy y'all Monday. I love y'all, man. God bless. Stay blessed. Peace.